Good morning, Bulldogs. Um, this is mostly, I guess, for Block 7. And hi to everyone else joining you um, on this Tuesday. Uh, so yesterday, we just found out that school will definitely not be reopening here in New Jersey for the rest of the year. Um, that probably makes you, I don't know, it makes um, us um, a little bit happy and a little bit sad all at the same time. Um, so I'm going to try to think of some different ways, things to do the rest of this month. We're finishing this unit this week, so maybe next week we can. Um, doesn't mean it's going to get more complicated. Um, just ways to be more positive or, I don't know, we're going this, I don't know. We'll just keep, um, I'm going to keep listening to your ideas. I know I had one kid who was very happy that school's not going back. I mean, she's in middle school. If you liked middle school, you're a rare specimen um and my son who's sort of devastated after not liking school for so long anyway um briefly here's today's top stories um from the new york times um there's now a warning that the death toll in the united states um could double as more states are reopening even with their cases increasing uh, states like tennessee um, and, and some out west. Uh, there's a whole list um, on the New York Times. Right now in our country, uh, the death toll is just under 70,000. Um, the death toll in New Jersey, I believe, is just under 7,000. Um, and remember, we had a fear that um, it could reach 100,000 deaths nationwide. And they're saying that could be more so like in the next month as opposed to months from now. So even as um, things start to relax in some states, not changing much in here, but if you do go to like a county park or something, you know, just make sure you're being mindful. Also, um, there's 15 children in New York City who were hospitalized, um, basically like a toxic shock syndrome. Um, and they believe that they had coronavirus and that this um, could be something related to it, uh, a side effect or an after effect. There were some cases like this also noted in Europe, but the European um, officials have not necessarily connected it to the coronavirus like we are doing here. So I know at first we're like, oh, you guys are young, you should be fine. But now we've learned that that's not always the case. So another reason just for you guys to be mindful and you know, wash your hands, practice social distancing, all those things. Um, the image is, I believe, from New York City um, in Brooklyn. All right. So the BBC News um, is that the global um, amount of deaths is about a quarter of a million now. All right. So think of that um, before the year ends, we're going to look at World War One and the amount of deaths and, and how the amount of deaths um, had a long effect on how uh, society recovered and, and what are going to be some of the after effects uh, globally from this coronavirus. France is now noting that its first case of coronavirus was actually back in December, they're learning, back when we thought it was still like limited to Wuhan or China. Remember, we learned a few weeks ago that we had cases in California in early February much sooner than we thought. So, um, you know, what does this mean um, that's for the scientists to learn. And remember I said sometimes it seems like the BBC just you know, highlights um, the ridiculousness of America. This is another very um, bad bad story. Um, in Michigan, it says here a, a store guard, so a security guard, killed after row. Row is not like a term we use a lot here. It basically means like an argument or a fight. So um, uh, the gentleman asked... Uh, uh, someone's daughter, I don't know the age, um, to put on a face mask and they had an argument. I think they believe it. Uh, they spat on him and then they left and then they returned and um, uh, the uh, son, who's an adult son, I believe, um, shot and killed the security guard. So another unfortunate victim of the coronavirus um, just because of the safety measures that we're all supposed to take. So you can read more about that on the BBC, and I'm sure it's in other U.S. news stories as well. So our thoughts go to this gentleman. Um, I should have his name. I think his initials were C.M. Well, Myron is the last name. I should know his name if I'm reporting on him. So my apologies. Um, but let's hope we have no more 
um, unfortunate deaths. I know it's frustrating wearing masks and things, but hopefully if you guys aren't going out much, you won't, you won't need them. I've been using a lot of my scarves and I'm not going out often, mostly just when we ran out of, run out of milk. All right. So here is, um, today's assignment. So today, um, we are continuing sort of our novels that deal with the industrial revolution. Um, it is the jungle by, uh, the muckraker Upton Sinclair, a little over a hundred years ago, about the the meat packing industry um, in the Midwest, in America, and the Industrial Revolution really changed the way we ate our meat. It didn't really come from a local butcher or a town farm anymore. Right now, the meat that we eat, if you eat meat, could come from hundreds, if not even further, miles away. Uh, so. Usually when I do this, um, we spend a few days on it. We learn about how meat is processed now. Uh, ask the sophomores. They saw a nasty video last year on how chicken nuggets were made. And some of them swore they were going to be vegetarians. Some are like, no, I love chicken nuggets too much. I don't care if it's made out of pink slime or whatever. So anyway, um, we're just focusing on this for today. And now there's a few things you can do here. Um, you can look up, just, you know, go on the, on the, Wikipedia or something else um, and learn about the jungle, learn about Upton Sinclair, learn what a muckraker is. Um, also, I put, I made a, I shared a video that I made for my um, former students at my old school like five years ago. So if you hear my kids in the background, you hear their voices are much younger, um, a little more high pitched if they are sensitive. Um, um, so you can watch that and I give the background of why this book was written and how it was written. Um, if you're like, I'm seeing too much of you on, Ms. on video, Miss B, you don't see me there. You only hear me. But if you're like, I don't want to hear your voice anymore. I don't want to watch it. I'll be honest. There's no um, questions on it. I'm not checking that you see that video. It just gives you background information. Then what you're going to do is you have, you're going to play the video um, that I um, recite part of two chapters from the jungle. It's shorter than the last one on hard times. And it's about the problems the employees faced and just how unhygienic and sometimes just how gross the, the meat was. My daughter helps me out. Um, she makes some illustrations um, to share as I read. Once again, if you're sick of looking at a screen, just Press play and turn it around and, and listen. Um, close your eyes. Sometimes that will help you with making a good visual. Um, now, you have two options then. You're going to either make a comic strip with at least three frames in the storyboard. You can do it on pencil and paper, you know, crayons, markers, get crazy. You can do it online. There's some um, programs people use like storyboard that where you can pick in like people um, there's even templates online. So feel free to use them if you want to, but you have trouble find some, let me know. Or you can write a diary entry and it explains to you what you'd want to include. Um, if you handwrite it, it should be about a page. If you type it and it's with a reasonable font, it should be at least half uh, a page and a little bit more. Um, now let me warn you, um, while you watch this, um, or listen to it, it should not be right after you ate or right before because it's not super gross, but it's a little gross. I would not be eating a Slim Jim or chicken nuggets. I would not be eating a big hunk of ham while you listen to it. If you have a strong stomach and you want to challenge yourself, go for it. See how you do. I will say you don't have to watch the background video, but if you want to get a four, um, you want to incorporate information from the background video um, into your comic strip or your journal. So. Um, keep that in mind. Remember, you can have really good everything else and still get a three, which means you can get a 90, which, um, you know, as long as you're doing well, a 90 or a 100 or something in between won't make a big um, difference on your grade. So just so you know. All right. So um, keep on the lookout for, for things um, to change um, next week to try to make this a little bit more fun, I guess. Next class is our assessment for the unit. It is not a test but it's a test grade, okay? Um, it's something you have just as much time as normal to do. Um, you don't need to study for it. You have all your resources at your fingertips, on your computer. Um, it's just gonna be an assignment 
that incorporates things from throughout the unit. So just keep, keep, you know, be ready for that. Tomorrow's Wellness Wednesday. I think we could all use Wellness Wednesday. Um, so hopefully you can get this done today and tomorrow you can just relax and be Zen and channel, channel plants and birds and your breathing and, and keep thinking of what we need to do to keep getting through this pandemic. I hope you're doing well. I'm thinking of you guys and your families. Um, let me feel free, um, to stay in touch besides just writing present, uh, on the attendance. Let me know how you're doing. All right. Miss you guys. Stay safe. Be well. And of course, go Bulldogs.